For my general thoughts and initial analysis of the album, make sure you check out part 1 of this Explain series if you haven't already, because I'll be referencing the ideas I talked about there. This time I'll be looking at the tracks of the project themselves under a closer lens, but not before taking a look at a secret message that Glover himself hid inside the source code of the website that the album first released on. Huge shout out to one of my subscribers, Koi, who let me know that he had found these messages in a comment on the last video. You should all go follow him on Twitter and Twitch at these handles. In the last video I had talked about the sense of reality being shared shifted and the chaotic undertones of the project being attributed to the current state of the world's pandemic and while it's true that those themes happen to be timely because of the world's current situation, these messages reveal what a lot of you guys corrected me on in the comments section before, that Glover focused on these themes for more personal reasons related to the death of his father in 2018. Here's the note found in the source code. It reads, I met with an oracle on a friend's recommendation. She cleansed me and told me three things. Someone would die, I had a star on my head, stay close to God. Then someone died and my vision was cleared, but I could not touch them, I felt on my own which had before always been enough. I met with the oracle again in a different form, she asked me, how long do you think people wait? As long as they need to. They're not gonna wait forever. At the dining room table after lunch my oldest asked, what are you looking for as I stared at the mountain made for someone else. I told my brother the dream where I asked Prince to see my father and Prince said he was fine. I told my brother the dream where all people screamed and clawed at each other in the street, and I knew of secret entry into a safe haven but could not remember where or why it was. I told my love the dream where my father held our unborn son, hiding underground as I prepared for a fight I knew I would lose, and how I woke up sobbing and how I felt deep shame and wanted to join where I imagined he was. But then a star the color of your smile shined onto my forehead and I laid back in my closet nesting on dirty clothes and watchtowers my mother had asked me to read but knew I never would. This closet that once housed my shame and refusal to love my most ugly had unintentionally allowed truth to collect and form and fall back onto me. In the first book, I will express you, I will write you, I will sing you, I will bring them as brothers and sisters and shape you for us, not just in our image but in the boundless colored canopy of eternity. This note is written in the form of a story, a story describing how his life shifted, was unable to be the same after the death of his father, before it was enough to be on his own, but after that fulfillment of the oracle's prediction, after his dad died it never felt the same, it felt like there was something missing. He then asks how long do you think people wait, which is him seeking closure, trying to figure out how long he needs to take to properly mourn the loss before things go back to normal. There's an acknowledgement that things can't feel off forever, that he needs to at some point move on, and to Glover, that closure he's seeking comes through representing his father's legacy, through his words and through his art, and because he writes that he plans on singing in the first book, I'd say the album itself is that book, giving more meaning to those timestamps as representative of page numbers or chapters. One of the dreams that he describes seems to be identical to the single visual of the album. The mass of people in the street represents that internal discord as he tries to return to his normal state. His previous state of life before the death of his father is that only solace represented by that safe haven, but as he states, it's now nowhere to be found. That memory of his father, the small things like the color of his smile and physical representations of that normalcy, like that closet, are what he realizes he could turn into a new safe haven, what can guide him to the truth in that case chaos, and by representing that chaos, that ugliness fully, through the first book, this album, he could find that truth and comfort and move on. Again, shout out to Koi for helping me find this. In addition to the note, he also found links to private videos on Vimeo that he managed to play, and they ended up being versions of the stream that debuted the album, one with the original full-length album and site design, and the other with a blank white visual in every song except for the intro track. He also walked me through how there seems to be an excessive number of links and lines of code for a website that simple, suggesting that Glover plans to do more with this site in the future. Is this how he plans on releasing all of his projects from now on? Will they continue to be live experiences that are later re-released? And if this is just what he says is the first book, marked with this specific date, will there be more projects with a similar structure down the line? Let me know what your thoughts are on that and the note down below. But now I'm going to go track by track through the songs that stuck out to me and that I didn't discuss in the last video to see exactly how Glover represents these ideas in his music. The song Algorithm is a 
that look into what Glover sees as a society that functions in binaries, all while actual experiences of people exist outside of those binaries. Things aren't really one or the other. Sometimes they're neither, or as he points out, they're often both. They're often paradoxical. He puts emphasis on these paradoxes, especially. They're essential to our way of life throughout the lyrics. For example, we all strive for survival knowing we will one day die anyway. He traces these paradoxes all the way to the origin of man, the story of Adam and Eve. It was the self-awareness that made them unworthy of paradise and damn them, but without that awareness, how could they ever find the truth? And he stays true to the central message. He needs to find a way to reflect his dreams, which are chaotic, complex, and as he puts it, in color, through a platform that is purely binary, an emotionless monochrome data stream. The paradox of him even attempting that expression is central to this entire project. So far, this hasn't really been Gambino's most successful project. It seems like his decisions to make his album titles, song names, and covers so minimal has worked against the algorithm, but here he acknowledges that the further he gets from that binary, the closer he could get to the rhythm, the true expression of his ideas, experiences, and in this case, quite literally, his dreams. DJ Dahi, who co-produced this next track, 1238, described it as funky, odd, but feels good. In a similar vein as Andre 3000's unique style in The Love Below. Interestingly enough, that could also be a description of the events in the song, a stream strip escapade with a lover. There's a sense of his desire to stay living in the present moment throughout the experience, but that theme of reality being shifted comes up through the setting of him actually tripping and through lines like, I ain't looking for another lifetime. 21's verse comes through with insight on the struggle of being an African American trying to create their own reality in a country in a system where they are targeted by harassment from police. 21, like many other black artists, uses art to make a living and a way out of his past life to become a boss in his new world of fame, his own world, a power traditionally reserved for white people in this country. These ideas that Gambino explored on his 2018 track, This Is America, which you can find my analysis for above, are echoed by 21 here and are continued by Gambino throughout the album. The next track continues to explore the theme of the struggles of being a black artist. It continues on the idea of creating one's own reality, but the pitfalls that come with it, along with the journey to do that as a black artist. His connection with his father is called upon in these lines where he reminisces on his advice, to be beautiful is to be hunted. Anyone who's able to create their own reality, to find their own path outside of expectations and in line with their own goals, will be the object of envy of those unable to do so. To be happy means that someone else ain't, as his father put it. That puts a target on their back, and that envy and hatred is especially prevalent for black artists, ones who make it off telling the stories of their troubled pasts, but then are haunted by those roots. Pop Smoke is one artist that comes to mind, an artist that was so careful about his image and associations once finally achieving fame and success, was tragically shot by people doubtless after that same goal. To be beautiful really is to be hunted, another paradox Glover is faced with. I want to finish with the last two tracks. 4748 strikes me in its paradox between its sound and its lyrics. It has an almost summary construction with light background vocals and upbeat drums, but again, almost summary. Even in the instrumental, there's that lasting feeling that something's off and the lyrics point to that with repetitions of the violence juxtaposed with pop-like repetitions going, don't worry about tomorrow. It's eerie the way he writes this. The line would normally mean live in the moment, but in the context of the song, it could imply that tomorrow could just not come, that life can be cut short by the violence. He ends this song with a conversation with his son legend, a conversation about love and self-love, and a solution and answer to all these issues, these paradoxes. There's a lot that can make life hard, but it's love that Glover believes can help power through the paradox, allow people's journeys to continue and unfold through it all. And that leads me to the last song, my personal favorite, which features Glover doing his best Anderson Pack impression in a funky and passionate conclusion. He continues his use of love as the solution to the chaos that weaves throughout the track powering through to the end with the call do what you want to do to embrace the primality the paradox of being human and use that as your energy you could feel that energy on this track through his screams his melodies ad-libs you can feel him doing exactly what he says he plans to do and doing exactly what he wants to do he says he feels good and despite everything he's been through and everything the world's going through i believe him thanks for watching